Thank God. What are you guys feeding everybody here? Like uh, steroid milk or something? Holy crap. I went out in the bathroom and I thought I was going to need a step ladder to use a urinal. Wow. I mean, I know I'm short, but come on. A lot of people are on the suing bandwagon, so maybe I'll do that for being short. Maybe I'll go around and I'll sue all the little cities for building the sidewalks too high. Every time I step off the curb, I bump my ass, so maybe that's uh, something I could do. Oh man, I am so excited to be here. What a fantastic crowd. Anybody here got kids? Yeah, All right, kids, kids are great, ain't they? I'll tell you, they can turn you into an Elvis impersonator real quick. Uh, you don't believe me? Come walking down your stairs one day, turn around the corner and kick a talking truck. Oh, 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 oh. Turn you right into an Elvis impersonator. You can also turn you into Michael Jackson. Yeah, come walking around the corner, walk in your kitchen, after they got done playing with their bubbles that they spilt all over the floor, and you're doing the side moonwalk all the way across, starting to catch yourself. <laughs> uh, I can imagine there's a bunch of married people out here. I've been married for four years. I've been loving it. I love my wife. We pick on each other all the time. And uh, sometimes I say things to my wife that I don't really mean uh, to be mean. I just say it without thinking. It's like my... My mouth and my brain, they don't mix, you know? One day my wife asked me, she says, honey, does this dress make my, uh, do, does this dress make me look fat? And I should have said, no, sweetheart, you're fine just the way you are. Well, come out of my mouth was, no, the fat around the waist makes you look fat. The dress is just a magnifying glass that makes it really stick out. <laughs> so that got me in the That got me in the doghouse, <laughs> you know? One time she says to me, she goes, Honey, I just bought some new shoes. Do they look cute on my feet or do they look too big? And I should have said, no. Geisha girls would be so jealous of your small little feet. What come out of my mouth was yabba dabba do, Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> that got me in some, some trouble. And uh, we liked it well. And, and uh, she likes to put on makeup, but she's still not that great at it. So we was getting ready to go out and she was putting on the makeup and she comes out and she says, Honey, how's this makeup look? Now, I should have said, a little touch up, you'll be fine, right? What come out of my mouth was, what is the circus in town? Who are you laughing to find? Well, that got me into trouble. I mean, I'm in the doghouse so much, the doghouse kicked, the dog kicked me out of the doghouse, and I'm starting to get fleas here. <laughs> so, Halloween just passed. Anybody have a good Halloween? Awesome. Last year, I had a bit of a mix up with Halloween. I talked to my friend, and I said, what are you doing for Halloween? He says, I'm going abroad. Oh, huh, that's a good idea, right? So I go over to his house on Halloween, and I knock on his door. I said, huh, there's nobody here, I better call him. I call him up, I say, hey Joe, where are you? He said, I told you, I'm going abroad. Well, I'm abroad too, I'm dressed at your house, I got my high heels on, I got my skirt, I got my wig, I'm looking pretty good. He said, no, stupid, I'm over in Europe. So that's a fine kettle of fish you got me into. <laughs> you know, so now I gotta walk home, and as I'm walking home, I'm getting these cat calls from these guys rolling down the windows. Hey, sweetheart, you wanna go for a ride for me in my car? I got a bag of Skittles. Bag of Skittles, I'm worth a Snickers at least. I'm gonna come on. <laughs> uh, Christmas is coming up. I love Christmas. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Last year, I bought my, my daughter a nice little bicycle for Christmas, and I was living in Boston. And of course, when it's time there, you can't really ride your bike until like April or May. So we go to the Boston Common in April and we're riding around. Well, the mounted police stop my daughter. And the mounted police says, well, I see you got a nice little bicycle there. Did Santa Claus bring it to you? Yes, sir. Well, I see you're out here with your helmet on and you're learning responsibility, so I'm gonna give you another lesson. He ended up writing my daughter a $25 ticket for not having a reflector on the back of her bike. <laughs> So my daughter says to the policeman, she says, did Santa Claus bring you that pony? Why, yes he did. Well, you tell Santa Claus next year, the dick goes underneath the horse. <laughs> uh, anybody here got uh, stepbrothers, mothers, sisters, anything like that? All right, let's talk about those stepmothers. If you are one, I apologize. <laughs> Uh, my stepmother is um, about as smart as a brick, and I'm giving the brick credit. 
credit there. Um, so she lives down in Texas. And down Texas, if you're not familiar with these little ants, they're called red ants. And when they bite you, they leave like a little whelp on you, like a, like a pimple. So she don't like these things, and she decided one day, I'm gonna get rid of these, and I know the surest way to do it, I'm just gonna wreck their home, and they'll be gone, they won't come back. <laughs> so she fires up a lawnmower, and she rides over the top of it, and just, it covered her from head to toe, like somebody poured a bucket of water on her, and they was just fighting the crap out of her. And she's screaming, no, get them off of me, get them off of me. So my dad runs out with a hose, and he's squirting her off. And about five minutes later, she was peppered from head to toe in these white dots. A blind man with a red braille on her, and it would have said, I'm stupid all up her butt. <laughs> she's so, she's, see something else, I'll tell you. One time she decided, I know the surest way to get rid of these fire ants. She went out and poured a gallon of gas on top of this anthill and went and struck the match, and she lost her eyebrows, her bangs, her mustache. It was just all good. <laughs> Now, she relates to things um, by pictures, you know, so you go to McDonald's and you can look up and you can see, you know, your burgers and fries, that's how she relates to things. Well, we happened to be down on the bike, and my dad had been working out on the tractor all day, and uh, he's got a little hemorrhoid problem. So he tells my, my stepmother, she, 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 she says, uh, you go in the tent and grab me some hemorrhoid oil. Well, she goes in there, grabs a tube, brings it out, and he squirts a nice big gob of it, and right up there he goes. Next thing you know, he's running down the bike with his pants around his ankle and he's screaming, ah! She ended up giving him a tube of icy hot. So, <laughs> talk about a drunk man dancing funny in the water. That's the funniest damn thing I ever saw. <laughs> so, um. Oh, three minutes. So, um, anybody here like flying? Uh -huh. I used to work for an airline company that uh, reconstructed airplanes, you know, re refurbished them and painted them and all that. If you ever see an airplane gutted out with nothing inside of it, you're probably going to think twice about getting on one. <laughs> uh, but recently, they changed the comfort pet policy on airplanes, and um, they they you know canceled out all a lot of the smaller animals that you can take on the plane with it for being a comfort pet. One animal that you can take on the plane that really amazed me when I found out is a miniature pony. Now you're gonna say, what? Because <laughs> that's what I said, what? Miniature ponies, now they, they allow them if they're um, like a trainer pony, like a lady was on the plane, she was blind, and the, it was a CI pony. But you gotta ask yourself when you first hear that, where are they gonna put the pony? Because the comfort pet policy is, you can't keep the uh, pony in the aisle seat, can't put him in the luggage rack, he's way too big, and you can't put him in the cargo hold because he's not going to be any comfort to you, right? Where he's going to fly up with a pilot? <laughs> I mean, I can see that now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Captain Johnson speaking. We're flying today with my co-pilot, Mr. Red. Please watch your step as you go up and down the aisle. He's been through a few times. <laughs> oh, man. So good. So good to be here. I want to thank uh, AJ Capuccio for putting this together.